The original Star Trek series aired September 8, 1966, and ran for three seasons and 79 episodes until ending June 3, 1969. Despite only lasting three seasons, Star Trek is one of the most enduring pieces of media to come out of its time. Since its debut, it's inspired a total of eight new TV series, 13 films, as well as countless books and games. It's probably the single most influential TV series ever created, and it's had a lasting impact on science fiction media ever since its birth. Even though it's now a cult classic, its ratings during its broadcast were really low, which is why it was canceled so prematurely. But after it was broadcast in syndication, people all over the country and the world were given a second chance to appreciate the show's genius. Despite being set far in the future, the creators of Star Trek wanted to use the show as an opportunity to discuss issues facing us today, like racism, classism, sexism, and war. And even though the narratives of the episodes often had more serious undertones, the show was primarily an action-adventure series with many comedic elements. Star Trek's writing and world-building have always been two of its greatest strengths, but one more element that made it so amazing was its cast. Sadly, because Star Trek aired so long ago, many of those amazing cast members have since passed away. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the cast members of the original Star Trek series who have died. Stick around because we're also going to reveal how one actor received a space-worthy funeral after his death. William Wyndham William Wyndham was already a well-known actor before making an appearance in Star Trek as Commodore Matt Decker. While he only guest starred in the season 2 episode The Doomsday Machine, his role remained a fan favorite for years. He acted in critically acclaimed shows and films like Murder, She Wrote, To Kill a Mockingbird, and My World and Welcome to It. He also had a specialty in sci-fi, appearing in Escape from the Planet of the Apes and in a classic episode of Twilight Zone. His acting career spanned 60 years, and he continued to act well into the end of his life. Sadly, he died of congestive heart failure on August 16, 2012, when he was 88. James Doohan James Doohan's role, Lieutenant Commander Montgomery Scott, was an integral part of the original series. He was the chief engineer of the USS Enterprise, known for being a miracle worker when it came to technology and engineering. His role as second commander also meant he was placed in charge whenever the leaders, Kirk and Spock, were away. James Doohan also had an impressive skill as a voice actor, and often voiced other aliens and various other non-human characters throughout the show. Despite his important role, he was nearly fired from the show altogether. He debuted in the show's second pilot, Where No Man Has Gone Before. However, after his first performance, the show's creator, Gene Roddenberry, was unimpressed and nearly let him go. Thank goodness he kept him on board. He remained highly involved in the Star Trek fan base, but in 2004, he retired for good due to a combination of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Sadly, on July 20, 2005, he died at age 85. However, some of his ashes were sent into space, commemorating his amazing contributions to science fiction. Michael and Sara Michael Ansara had a prolific acting career, appearing in films and TV shows like Broken Arrow, I Dream of Genie, and Batman the Animated Series. His incredible contributions to TV even earned him a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. His role on Star Trek was short-lived but memorable. He played the character Commander Kang for a total of three episodes, but the role had enough impact on audience members he was able to reprise it in Star Trek Deep Space Nine and Star Trek Voyager. Sadly, he died on July 31, 2013, when he was 91 years old, after a long battle with Alzheimer's. Ricardo Montalban Ricardo Montalban is fondly remembered for playing possibly the greatest villain in the history of Star Trek, Khan Noonien Singh. He and his followers went into suspended animation for centuries before awakening and attempting to overthrow the USS Enterprise in the thrilling episode Space Seed. The character was so interesting, and Montalban's interpretation of him so compelling, he even got to reprise the role in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. He continued to work for many years as an actor in various films and TV shows, until his death on January 14, 2009, when he died of heart failure at age 88. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you give it a like, and be sure to subscribe to Facts First for more. And stick around, because we're going to reveal the life, death, and legacy of the most legendary Star Trek actor who ever lived. Yvonne Craig Yvonne Craig wasn't the only green-skinned woman in Star Trek, but she brought plenty of life to her role. She used her skills as a trained dancer in the episode Whom Gods Destroy. 
She was already known for her physical skills as an actor, having played Batgirl slash Barbara Gordon on the ABC TV Batman series. She was highly praised for her devotion to performing all her stunts on her own. Even though she only appeared on Star Trek for a short time, she was equally devoted to the small role as she was every other role. On August 17, 2015, she died of breast cancer at 78. William Campbell William Campbell played not one, but two different villains in Star Trek The Original Series. In Season 1, he played the role of Trelane, more frequently known as the Squire of Gothos. Then he made a second appearance in Season 2, this time as a Klingon commander named Captain Koloth in the episode The Trouble with Tribbles. He later reprised his second role in an episode of Star Trek Deep Space Nine as well. On April 28, 2011, he died at age 87. Jane Wyatt while Jane Wyatt had a long and distinguished career in film and TV that stretched from 1934 to 92, she's probably best remembered for two roles. As homemaker Margaret Anderson for six seasons and 200 episodes of the sitcom Father Knows Best, and as Amanda Grayson, the human mother of the Enterprise's first officer, Mr. Spock. She first played Amanda on the season two episode Journey to Babel, which movingly explored the backstory of Spock and his strained relationship with his father, Sarek. Wyatt reprised the role in 1986's Star Trek IV The Voyage Home. She won three Emmys for Father Knows Best and worked consistently for the rest of her life, even scoring a recurring role on St. Elsewhere from 1985 to 87. She was with us until the age of 96, when she passed away on October 20th, 2006, in Bel Air, California. Leonard Nimoy Leonard Nimoy, of course, is the most iconic and legendary actor in the whole of the Star Trek universe. His portrayal of Spock put him down in history, and he'll remain an icon among science fiction for many decades, if not centuries. He even had an asteroid named after him. Leonard is known for so much more than just his acting, however. He worked hard throughout his life as an advocate for the arts, science, and Jewish causes. He died on February 27, 2015, from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease at age 83, and actors and devoted fans mourned him intensely. Now it's time to hear from you. Were you more surprised to learn that actor William Campbell played two different villains in the original series, or that James Doohan was nearly fired from the show? Let us know in the comments section below, and be sure to subscribe to Factsverse for more. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.